Okay, so let us continue with our chapter. Right now it's 2.27 in the afternoon. It's still the 8th of Saturday. We, um, the la our battery died on the last video, so we just let it charge for some time, and we ended up going to out doing a few things with our parents, but we're back. We remember the last thing we were going over were the adrenaline, the adrenal glands. And um, this is basically the body's fight or flight system. When your your body releases adrenal, the adrenaline inside of your bloodstream, you know your 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 heart rate goes up, your blood vessels open up, so there's better blood flow. Your 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 breathing capacity is happening even quicker, so you're you're supplying even more oxygen to your your body to your cells. As we learn that air. Oxygen is by far the most important thing that our body requires for life. You know, other than the energy we breathe, you know, we, they call it pranic energy. But with all that being said, let's continue from where we had left off. Okay, now remember, we are on this part. Okay, so these glands respond to certain emotional excitements by an immediate increase in volume of secretion, thus increasing the energy of the whole system and preparing it for effective response. So certain emotional excitements such as, you know, let's say you're going skydiving, okay, the, the just the emotion of skydiving is going to, you know, release some more adrenaline inside of your, your your bloodstream and you're going to feel that excitement, you're going to feel, you know, you might be breathing a little bit quicker, your heart rate's gone up, you know, or other things of excitement or even those things that might, you know, kind of scare you or that you feel you need to get away from, you know, those types of things are the things that puts you in that emotional state which makes you release more of these secretions within your bloodstream, thus making you not only feel certain ways, but also, you know, like, increasing the energy of the whole system as to what the adrenaline, adrenaline glands do. Okay, so continuing. Next we have the pineal gland. Okay, the pineal gland, I was mentioning it earlier, okay, the pineal gland has the rods and cones inside of the gland just as the retina of your eye. Okay, it's known, it's Okay, so pineal gland is a small conical structure located behind the third ventricle of the brain. The ancients realized that this gland was of vast importance. It was spoken of as an as a spiritual center, which would be the dimethyltryptamine, okay, DMT, which is known as a spirit molecule which is found inside of everything. Okay, in other words, you know, consciousness and then he goes on into saying, it is spoken of as a spiritual center, the seat of the soul, and possibly of eternal youth or life everlasting. It is near the top and at the back of the head. The thymus gland is located at or near the bottom of the throat, just below the thyroid gland, and is considered essential for children only. But it is not po but is it not possible that the degeneration of this gland is one of the causes of premature senility? Excuse me. The pancreas is located just behind the peritoneum near the stomach. This gland aids digestion and when not properly functioning, an excess of sugar may be produced, which causes diabetes or other serious troubles. Okay, remember how we were we were just talking earlier about the pancreas. Okay, the pancreas is responsible for, you know, the insulin in your body. Okay, insulin is what helps your cells take in the carbohydrates that are floating around through your bloodstream or, or sugars. You know, sugar, people who have diabetes have excess amount of sugar within their bloodstream. Okay, which means that they're eating too much sugar and they're exerting not enough energy because carbohydrates are the body's main source of energy. Okay, and if we have an excess amount of the main source, okay, then you're going to have extra fats, then you're going to have, you know, all those spare proteins. But if we have too much of this carbohydrate, okay, it's, it's, that's how diabetes um, comes into play. And, and diabetes, just by a simple 20 minutes of exercise a day, has a profound, profound um, effect on, on lowering the, the, you know, the, the diabetes 
of, of preventing diabetes. There we go. That's the word I was looking for, prevention. Okay, moving on. The sex glands are located at the lower part of the abdomen and it is through the functioning of these glands that life is created and the process of reproduction carried on. When the secretions from these glands are not called upon for pro procreative purposes, they are poured into the cell life, renewing the energy, strength, and vitality. If they fail to function, there is depression and generally debility. It is clear then that if we find if we can find some way to make these glands continue to function, we can renew our health, strength, and youth indefinitely. Because the thyroid develops vital energy, the pituitary controls blood pressure and develops mental energy, the pancreas controls digestion and bodily vigor, the adrenals furnish pep and ambition, and the sex glands control the secretions which manifest as youth, strength, and power. In these seven glands, remember they're they're not only the seven glands, but you know they're they're the 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 seven they're they're like the seven channels for the distribution for you of the seven nerve ganglia. You know, like these seven nerve ganglia are creating the vibrations, or channeling the vibrations from our mind body, you know, our subtle body. Remember how we were going over that the mind is only a system of vibration, okay, and these vibrations operate through the nerves, okay, the nerves of your body, you know, and then and, and, and these nerves, okay, are the, these glands <laughs> respond to these nerves, and when they respond to the nerves, it, it, it's what causes these, these you know, the, the secretions in the bloodstream. And, 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 and it's clear that if we can find some way to make these glands continue to function, we can continually renew our health because our body's constantly creating itself, you know, recreating itself. You know, the person we are today is completely different than the person we were a year ago, both in mind and body, you know, mentally and physically, because we have already gone through the process of, of full body recreation. We can better understand the mechanism of glands when we remember that the sun is the source of all life, that the rays from the sun are differentiated into seven different tones or colors or qualities by the seven different planets, and that they enter the human system by the seven plexi located along the spinal column. And we now find that this life is carried to the seven major glands of the body where it controls and dominates every function. Basically, us to the sum of what we had just said. Unfortunately, however, ordinary window glass excludes practically all the ultraviolet rays, which are the most essential in the maintenance of health and vitality. A few sanitariums and hospitals have had special windows of fused quartz constructed, which admits these ultraviolet rays, but so far the costs of such windows are prohibited. The single window costing from $10,000 to $15,000. Apparatus is now constructed, however, which may be attached to the ordinary electric current, so that the full benefit of the vital rays from the solar orb may be secured. When the glands are supplied with the vital rays of which we have heretofore been deprived, the result will be a remarkable degree of vitality, mental and physical vigor. In fact, it is already known that cholesterol can be converted into a vitamin by the action of the ultraviolet rays, and it is possible that other inert substances may be activated in like manner. Wow, so these hospitals, they, they installed single window castings for which will admit ultraviolet rays, you know, these, these special windows of fused quartz, of fused quartz, okay, these allow alt ultraviolet rays within the, the, the hospital, and this in turn helps supply glands with vitality, because only under ultraviolet rays, cholesterol can be converted into a vitamin by the action of the ultraviolet ray, and it is possible that other inert substances may be activated in like manner. Inert substances, substances that are inside you that may only be activated by the ultraviolet part of the ray. 
Wow. The ultra red rays have always have also been found to be an exceedingly valuable therapeutic agent. Fabrics of certain weaves are used to filter these rays. Deductions from the experiments made by several of the world's leading scientists more than 15 years ago are the effect that it will be possible for the physical body of man to become so purified and responsive that it may be continue living from age to age without death. And remember how I, I mentioned taught the Atlantean several times while reading this video, the person who built the, the Great Pyramid of Giza. He was known to live several hundred, or yeah, several tens of thousands of years, like 30,000 something years. He ruled like one part of, of a land, you know, and, and he would talk about how us in our real state of being are formless, you know, shapeless, and we're able to, to you know, project ourselves out of our own body, you know, like they call it astral projection to nowadays. The vibratory force of life can be inspired to such a degree and radiated through the tissues to such an extent that this man of clay will really become a temple of the living God, not merely a reservoir of unconscious and unregulated intelligence, but a living oh, oh, oh. that this man of clay will really become a temple of the living God, you know the temple, the mind, okay, not merely well the body being the temple, God being the mind, and not merely a reservoir of unconscious and unregulated intelligence, but a reservoir of conscious and 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 an, 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 an ordered intelligence, you know, because there's an intelligence that is keeping us together, you know, I don't have to continuously think about my heart to beat, you know, you don't have to continuously think about your heart to beat, it's something that it, it is regulated, it, it is an ordered intelligence that is within all of us. By very simple hygienic care, we can greatly prolong each life manifestation. Hence, we have reason to believe that a complete knowledge of vibratory force and its effect upon the structure of the body will aid the organism in making the life manif manifestations permanent. Basically saying, if we learn how, how to continuously renew and revitalize our bodies, you know, by you know, not only by knowing how our own mental system works, you know, our mind system, our own vibratory system, but how our body reacts to these internal vibrations that we have as well, we would be able to, to you know, reach immortality, you know, we would be able to reach a state where we never die, because if the body is continuously creating and recreating itself, then it's obvious that, you know, it's, it's possible that we may live to not ever have to die, you know, we just need to figure out how. Nowadays, you know, people are still living to 100, but they go their entire life without taking care of themselves. They go their entire life by eating poorly, you know, they they they, they make it so far. Imagine how far they could make it if, if you know, every day they're eating like they're, they're supposed to. Every day they're, they're furnishing and, and feeding the body the things that it, it needs for continuous growth and healthy growth. You know, nutritional dense foods instead of calorie dense foods. You know, foods that actually have nutrition for your body instead of just tons of calories that you're just going to gain weight on. Okay, so death is not a necessary, inevitable consequence or attribute of life. Death is biologically a relatively new thing which made its appearance only after living things had advanced a long way on the path of evolution. Death is biologically a relatively new thing which made its appearance only after living things had advanced a long way on the path of evolution. Maybe maybe he means that you know such a long way on the path of evolution 
you know, how we are. You know, we're our own self-sustaining organism. You know, we, we eat, we drink water, we do all these things, we breathe in order that all this intelligent, all these cells out of which this body is made out of is able to, to, to stay alive. You know, because we don't, we don't, our cells feed themselves. You know, yeah, we feel hungry, we eat something, but our cells are the ones that are choosing, you know, how much carbs that they're going to take out of whatever it is that we ate. Single-celled organisms have proved under critical experimental observation to be immortal, to not die. They reproduce by simple fission of the body, one individual becoming two. This process may go on indefinitely without any permanent slacking of the rate of cell division and without the intervention of the rejuvenating process. Without any permanent slacking, a single-celled organism is known to be immortal. It does. It wastes no time in, in separating itself, in in, de, in multiplying itself, provided the environment of the cells is kept favorable. They must be in an environment where you know they can flourish without any 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 difficulty. The germ cells of all sexually differentiated organisms are, in a similar sense, immortal. Reduced to the formula, we may say that the fertilized ovum produces a soma and more germ cells. The soma eventually dies. Some of the germ cells prior to that event produce somata and germ cells, and so on in the continuous cycle which has never yet ended since the appearance of multicellular organisms on the earth. So these, these germ cells, they're in a way, what he's saying, they're kind of asexual. You know, just like worms. Okay, worms don't need to mate with another worm to reproduce itself. Okay, they're able to do it on their own. Okay, kind of like these cells that he's talking about. The soma. Okay, first it is the the. Okay, first it is the fertilized ovum, which will produce a soma in more germ cells, and then the soma will die, and then. And then some of the germ cells prior to that event produced somata and more germ cells, and so on in a continuous cycle which has never yet ended since the appearance of multicellular organisms on the earth. Okay, produces a soma and more germ cells. The soma will die, but the germ cells prior to that event prior to the event of the soma dying, produced a somata and more germ cells, and so on in the continuous cycle, which has never yet ended since the appearance of multicellular organisms on the earth. So long as reproduction goes on in this way, in these multicellular forms, there is no place for death, because they're continuously recreating and creating themselves. The successful cultivation of the tissues of higher vertebrates over an indefinitely long period of time demonstrates that death is no sense is in no sense a necessary con concomitant of cellular life. Concomitant like of necessary concomitant necessary of its con no sense a necessary concomitant, like no necessary event. You know, it, it's, it doesn't need to happen in the cellular life. Let's look it up. Concom. Con. Concomitant. Concomitant. Existing or occurring with something else often in a lesser way, accompanying, concurrent, an event. Okay, an event, yes. The successful cultivation of the tissues of higher vertebrates over an indefinitely long period of time, basically like the evolution, okay, demonstrates that death is in no sense a necessary event of cellular life. 
because if these vertebrates are able to evolve themselves to such a high degree, okay, if they if they could go up the spectrum of evolution, then why do they even have to go down to the death portion of the of life period? You know, they're they're continuously moving up towards more growth, okay? Why would they they, they even look into going back the other way? So let, let's read a little bit more on how that may be. It may fairly be said that the that the potential immortality of all essential cellular elements of the body either has been fully demonstrated or has been carried far enough to make the pot the probability very great. Generalizing the results of the tissue culture work of the last two decades, it is highly probable that the cells of all the essential tissues of the metazoan body are potentially immortal. When placed separately under such conditions as to supply appropriate food in the right amount and to remove promptly the deleter deleterious pr products of metabolism. So the conditions of the body, when it when it's given the right foods to eat, to take care of itself, to revitalize itself, when it's when when the all the glands of the body are working in proportion as to what they're supposed to, when the nervous system is working in exact accordance to to the mind that is behind it. Okay, appropriate conditions. Okay, the conditions that these cells are living in. If they live in the right conditions, then they're continuously going to produce. And if they're not living in the right conditions, that's when disease and decay and death come into play because they're they're not under the proper conditions of survival. And there should be no reason why these conditions shouldn't exist naturally on Earth. You know, for life to even exist in general on this planet, the, the conditions of life must be perfect. Okay, and, and, and nature itself is compelled to, to 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 give more life to all life, you know. But why why are we why are we in a state right now where every when things are decaying? Why do things decay? Period. You know, it's 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 not nature's way of doing things. It's our ways of doing things. You know, it's how society is doing things. It's what may what makes it the way it is. You know, just like a, a however much water is in a bottle will create that body of water and also the weight of it. Okay, just like society, whatever society is, is, is you know, what society is made out of. You know, the individuals that live in that society and how they act towards that society, you know, is what's going to create it to be the way that it is. As long as it's in the proper conditions, the conditions of nowadays aren't exactly as proper as they could be. The fundamental reason why the higher multicellular animals do not live forever appears to be that in the differentiation of specialization of functions of cells and tissues in the body as a whole, any individual part does not find the conditions necessary for its continued existence. And he just said it right here. The conditions aren't necessary for the tissues in the body to continue the way that they were. Okay, so, you know, like diabetes, for example. The, the, the cells of the body are not under the proper conditions because the individual eats way too much sugar, okay, eats way too much carbohydrates, and they don't exercise nearly enough. You know, that could be one reason why the conditions within the body aren't how they should be, or, you know, they, they might have type 1 diabetes, okay, type 1 diabetes is a, um, is genetic, okay, and, and people who have type 1 diabetes need to inject themselves with insulin, okay, so their bodies could actually take the, the carbohydrates from the bloodstream and use it for energy, and if these conditions, it's, it's not a, a okay, because, the person's, the individual cells don't do it by themselves, okay, so that's one condition that they have which isn't functioning as it should, okay, and it's because of this functioning that the individual, you know, it, that, you know, tissues of that individual have 
may get lost. I had a, my great grandpa, he was diabetic. And he had it really bad. He, um, diabetes caused him to go blind. He lost his eyesight. He had one big toe amp amp amputated on one foot and he had his whole leg cut off on the other foot from his knee down. All from diabetes. You know, because the conditions of the body aren't 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 in the conditions that they need to be for proper growth, to for proper functioning. In the body, any part is dependent for the necessities of its existence upon other parts, or upon the organization of the body as a whole, because our muscular system wouldn't be there without the skeletal system, and the skeletal system wouldn't be able to move around without the muscular system, and none of these would even matter without the nervous system. Okay, it's one thing needs an another. Okay, we're all, just as all the organs in your body are, are there for each other, just so are, you know, all the people on this planet, we're all here for each other. You know, we're, we're, we're here to grow together, we're here to learn together, and we're here to, to, to do what we can for each other, like making these videos, which we, pretty sure not many people, well, who knows, maybe, maybe one day. You know, it's funny, because when I started with these videos, I had this giant vision of what, you know, it's going to be, you know, I'm sure it is going to be that way one day, which is why I'm still here making these videos, even after a year, you know, but, but even so, it's, 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 All that being said, let's let's continue. So no matter what happens, actions actions are what make things happen. It is the differentiation and specialization of function and the mutually dependent aggregate of cells and tissues which constitute the metazoan body that brings about death, and not any inherent or inevitable mortal mortal process in the individual cells themselves. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. When cells show characteristics, senescent changes in the probably, it is probably a consequence of their mutually dependent association in the body as a whole. It does not primarily originate in any particular cell. Because of the fact that the cell is old, it occurs in the cells when they are removed from the mutually dependent relationship of the organized body as a whole. In short, death does not appear to be a primary attribute of the physiological economy of individual cells as such, but rather of the body as a whole. So individually, these cells are shown to be, you know, there's no reason why they should die. But it's the functioning of these cells as a whole. You know, if they're not working together properly, that's what creates, you know, disease in the body. Because death does not appear to be a primary attribute of the physiological economy of individual cells. You know, like you was saying, the, sim the single-celled organism actually shows immortality within its own, own, own functions. And as such, Okay, economy of individuals as such, but rather of the body as a whole. Recent researchers, okay, hold on. Let's, let's go ahead and end it right here. We have three more pages to go through, so we don't want this one to be too long, so I'll